and we are we fall prey to being disappointed the enemy will come and do everything to try to block you to stop your prayers to to cause you to withdraw your faith all of that is designed to disappoint you when you get disappointed because in your heart you had an appointment with that particular thing that you were believing for and it didn't happen now you are disappointed when you're disappointed your heart drops you may not say anything but your heart drops and it's hard to get your heart back up to the place that it was it was before you were disappointed are y'all here yeah, and so uh, the enemy's working nonstop to frustrate you. But I don't want you to have this attitude of victim or this attitude that I've got to be on the defensive all the time. You're going to have to learn how to uh, step it up, cowboy up as it were, and go on the offensive. The faith of God is aggressive. Amen. I'm not talking about in our flesh. I'm talking about the God kind of faith. Remember the Lord said, if you have the God kind of faith, you shall say. You go on the offensive. Amen. And you let the enemy live on his heels. Praise God. So let's take a look at this. Um, this is um, a little bit different than what we uh, started with last uh, this past Sunday, but now you can kind of walk through it, I guess. I don't know what the Spirit of God wants to do. We might start screaming and running in here. First Timothy chapter 4, It'll look on your outline, and our, our title is Soldiers Be on High Alert. Say, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. Tell the person on either side of you, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. Amen. And that these are not weekend warriors. This is the for real, though, so soldiers. Amen. And if you're a soldier, and you are, then you have to be uh, aware that we are in warfare. Amen. A lot of people want to just be happy, and we just want the Lord to bless us, and everything goes our way, and we never have a challenge. And if we have a challenge, it is not what God wants. And we're just going to tiptoe through the tulips, and we're going to have a spiritual woodstock. We just sit out and hang out in our groupy sections. It ain't the way life is. The moment you get born again, all hell tend to break loose. It's because now you are of the kingdom of God, born of the kingdom of God. You are born of light. Light dispels darkness. The enemy is banking on you never, ever finding out who you are in Christ, that you live in the world of ignorance. Therefore, you won't be able to walk in the world of righteousness. Say, I'm righteous. So the enemy, he comes at you, but we win. Amen. The punch that you throw will put the enemy on his back. The punch that you throw can annihilate the enemy. And you got to know I got a mean punch. Not your flesh, not your fist. When you throw the word of God, you throw in God's fist. Now I know when the father hits somebody, they ain't getting up. Amen. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, and then verse 12. It's on your outline. Let's all read that together, shall we? Read. Now the Spirit expressly says, 
that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing or deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Amen. And so um, a lot of people think the last days are on the way. But we're in the last days. And it's a frame of time that precedes Christ's second coming. And he said that there would be several things that would uh, occur. Matter of fact, uh, pull your Bible out and maybe y'all can pull this up. Y'all should be able to pull it up on the, uh, put it on the monitors. But in Matthew chapter 24, uh, the disciples asked the Lord about this. Matthew 24 and uh, verse 3. And it says, now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. So that means there are devils and there are people influenced by devils. Whether they know it or not, they have a mission, and that is to deceive you. Yeah. You got to be somebody very important. Why does the enemy need to deceive you? You need to be asking yourself that. Why does the enemy, why does he want to deceive me? What is it about me that he wants to deceive me? To reroute me into something else. You're not a number. You are a meaningful, specific. Amen. You are a child of Almighty God. And hell knows who you are. That's not for you to be afraid. They're supposed to know who you are. Say, I'm somebody. He said, take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Well, they can't be deceived if they don't believe what they say. So you got all kind of folks that have, you know, in our lifetime that have come come up and say they're the, they're they're Jesus, and people have left their families, left their homes. They, I mean, everything sold their old Barbie dolls to bankroll these folks, and then you find out that it's not so. You know, they had the one case in Ghana years ago where all these folks drank the Kool Aid, as folks joke about. Well, they died when they drank the Kool-Aid. And, I mean, it's, it's a tragedy, but that's the power of deception. So you can't take it lightly. Amen. We'll deceive many. Verse 6, and you will hear of wars, rumors of war. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation or ethnic group will rise against nation. There's going to be ethnic uh, problems. There's going to be political divisions. And then he says, in kingdoms against kingdoms, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Just that list by itself can wear you out. And it's like, the end is not yet. That's not the end. It gets worse and worse and more and more intense while you, the believer, are alive. And while we are alive, there's the great commission that is still given to you. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. While all this stuff is going on and all this stuff is coming at you, you got an assignment. This stuff coming at you is to get you to never focus on that assignment and to back away from it. And when you back away from it, here's a, a wonderful alternative. And if you embrace the alternative, then you are no longer a threat to hell. You are probably now a POW. And there won't be any uh, seats on the fence. We either in or out. 
We're either walking with in, in the things of God according to his kingdom mandate or we're not. We either hear him or we're not hearing him. Are y'all here? There's going to be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then, everybody say then. then. <laughs> if that wasn't enough, he has another list. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will, will betray one another, and will hate one another. That's some strong stuff. Have you noticed all the stuff that comes at you and offends you? Have you noticed that offenses have the ability to stick with you? When people get, a, saints get offended, we tend to deny it. Oh, I'm not offended, but it's sitting in your chest. Who offended you? What offended you? Why did you take the offense? I'm trying to just stare at me. <laughs> yeah. So people are going to become offended, betray each other, and hate each other. Watch the progression. Offended, betray each other, and hate each other. It creates a nice mix that creates an atmosphere for what comes next. Many false prophets. They rise up and deceive many. Why? I ain't going to listen to you because I'm offended with you. A false one comes along and they're going to tell you what you want to hear. Oh, they can't tell me. No, you're open now because you're offended. Hello. You got in the mix that creates the atmosphere for false to come, but you don't know that they're false. They're going to deceive many. Verse 12 to me is the big kicker. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Lawlessness is people do what they want to do. The standards that were considered norm, the things that God said is true and is wrong or a lie, is washed out. What was wrong last year is right this year. What was extreme has now become norm. We don't know what's what. Everybody's right. This is my truth. Everybody got a truth. Well, if you have, the, you have a truth, I try to dispute it. You're not buying it because it's your truth. So if it's your truth, whatever I'm saying is my lie. You see how mixed up and confusing it gets? And then we start saying what we feel, what we think, and we add it all in the mix and mix in the word of God, and you come up with error. But everybody say the error mixture is true. So lawlessness is abounding in every sphere of influence and people get weary. And so you love grow cold. That's the time we're in and it's the last days and these are things that happen in the last days. So look back at your outline again. So it's serious because the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some are going to depart from the faith. There we just read uh, in Matthew uh, uh, several things that can cause people to become open. Let me tell you this. Guard your heart against being offended. You're going to have to deal with it. But 
I wasn't wrong. I know. What do you do with it? You were not wrong. But they came at you and you got hurt. And the offense came. The Lord said, offenses are going to come. Woe to the one that it came by. But it came. Here it is, standing in front of you. What you going to do with it? You cannot manage it with your emotions. Listen to me. You cannot manage an offense with your emotions. Because if you do, there is an evil spirit standing by to help you since you choose to manage this thing with your emotions, how you feel. It will help you. It will advise you. It will speak comforting words to you. But it's coming from a devilish source. Because the offense is devilish. It's a weapon of the enemy. So all of this is a snapshot of warfare. We think we're going to fall on our face and quote a couple of scriptures and shana-na and do a few ha-ta-tas and loose and the devil going to take off running a whole bunch because you said loose and ta-ta-ta. No. You got to understand the nature of the war. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Will you elbow your neighbor and say, this is serious business. I want you to get this because as you go into this time of consecration and prayer, you're not trying to change God. He wants us to change. And he wants scales to come off of our eyes. He wants our uh, ears to be unstopped so we'll know. Is that your voice I've been hearing? Because the devil can play the ventriloquist. If he can get a person or people to, to not spend time in the word, what you're doing is you will load your heart up with other stuff. And you will come into a battle zone, not knowing it's a battle zone, and will not know how to be anchored in the word, and the enemy will launch an attack that will be swift and decisive, taking you down. Which will save, sanctify self. And we're like, no, that, that can never happen to me. That can never happen. It's war. This is war. This is war. Let me mess with your head for a second. What would you do if you looked out your window and saw a group of demons standing out in front of your house? They've been watching you. Now you see them. They watch, they're watching you and have been watching you and think they can take you. What are you prepared to do? You're going to have to get up off of those 10-minute prayers you've been throwing around. And you're going to have to stop trying to live off of what you did when you were five years old. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, where you are right now, you might not wake up. So you can't play around with stuff. Did you know it's your responsibility as a believer to find out what the word says? Not sit around and say, well, the preacher didn't tell me nothing. You got to get in the word too. Is this too much? Amen. Whew. So some are going to depart from the face, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy. Don't believe every report that comes to you. Did you know, like this thing about offense just keeps coming up. Did you know when you get offended, 
you are open to hear stuff about folks. You have opened your heart to hear mess. You have opened your heart to hear lies. You have opened your heart to hear gossip. Gossip is a weapon of hell. Slander is a weapon of hell. They use it. You know, it's one of their weapons. It's an arrow or it's a bullet. But it's, you become the target of it. How can I get this? And this will stop your forward progress when you're offended. You can be doing this. That don't mean you're going nowhere. you just moving. Your legs are moving, but there's no progress. Before the offense, you were taking strides. Now you're on the treadmill. You're moving, but you got an arrow of offense in your back. It stopped you from going forward. And we think because we're moving that we're doing what God wants us to do. Let me tell you this. The more you learn, y'all looking at me? You listening? The more you learn and the higher you go, the lower you got to go in humility. And the more you got to get the word in you so that it can anchor you. No anchor. You'll be doing some good things and drift off to a place where you can fall off the edge. Won't even know that you've drifted. Because the enemy's battle against the saints is not, okay, here come an arrow. I'm getting ready to shoot you. They don't come and say, wake up, wake up, wake up. You know, we ready to fight you. This is not like, what was that, a, a, a Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote? They chased Roadrunner all day long, and then at 4 o'clock, the horn went off. Boop, and then they went over to the tree, and it was a time clock. And they took their time card and put it in. Click. It was over for the day. See you tomorrow. Okay, Ralph. That's not how it works. The enemy's not going to give you some prior notice. The Spirit of God will tell you, get up. Come see me. Wake you up out of a deep sleep. Something sitting heavy on the inside of your chest. And he wants you to pray. And you want to lay there and pray. They're like, no, get up. Have you noticed when the Lord has you to build an altar, it's not next to your bed? And some of y'all looking like, an altar, huh? Yeah, it's a place of prayer, a place where you commune with the Lord and a place where you come to the end of you. And there's a whole lot to you, so there's a whole lot of ends. Well, I, I, I gave my life to the Lord in 19 art. Well, good. Give it to him now. Amen. He says, get up. And your flesh is like, I don't feel like it. I just laid down. How come I got to be the one? That's an unsurrendered soul. And an unsurrendered soul to the king is a surrendered soul to the flesh that has a standby assistant demon. I will accommodate you because I've been assigned to monitor you and study you. And I know you don't want to hear what God's got to say unless it's going to net you something big that you can flaunt in front of the people. At the altar, the Spirit of God will check that because that, going into the war with Craig, is going to get Craig and a whole bunch of other folks dead. And we'll stand before the throne of God. Lord, how come, how come I'm here? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I gave you purpose that would affect the lives of 20 million people. 
And here you are, and you didn't touch with fire. Because you didn't want to get up. Every time we bow up, I'm speaking to you. Every time we bow up to the Lord, you don't know what effect it's having. God can get accomplished what he wants to accomplish either with you So look at this. In the last days, the church is faced with spirits, will be faced with spirits of deception and doctrines of devils. The strategy of the devil is to get the people of God to become weary in their mind. That's why he works on you. He wants you to become weary in your mind. Weary in your mind. It's not just one thing. You can handle one or two thoughts. One or two things, you know, they got pressure, but I can handle these. But what happens when it's 15 things at one time and they don't clear up before the day is up? And you get up the next morning, it's more. It's like juggling instead of three balls, you got 15 and you're tired. Hello. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So he wants the saints to become weary in their mind of the walk of faith and to feel that their emotions and their senses have been neglected. If you start feeling, I'm tired of being the one to be faithful all the time. Thank you for joining us for The Heart of a Servant, an outreach ministry of Canaan Christian Center in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. If you are in the Pine Bluff area, we'd love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our United Prayer on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. and for our midweek service on Wednesday night at 7. We would also like to give a special thank you to all of our covenant partners. If you are interested in becoming a covenant partner, please visit our website or send us an email. We are Canaan Christian Center, praying that you have the heart of the ideal servant.